It's a scene that happens all too frequently in this country. Star player Wes Leonard collapsed on the court just moments after making the game-winning basket. It will be at least a week before we know exactly what caused the sudden death of Hank Gathers. This time it was 16-year-old Robert Garza. It happens roughly 75 times a year in the United States alone. A student collapses and dies on the court or field. When a tragedy like this happens, people often Everybody think okay? there's nothing they can do. But there is. Immediate treatment before paramedics arrive with cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR, and an automated external defibrillator, or AED, gives the victim the best chance at life. Sudden cardiac arrest can strike anyone at any age at any time. I was playing basketball in the gym and I just collapsed. I had no idea that I was at any risk and uh, suffered a cardiac arrest. And luckily, thankfully, CPR was started right away, and I'm here today because of that. And I ran out here, and Tori was on the ground, and I just called 911 immediately. Carrie Conger helped save Tori's life by starting CPR. It took me a long time to come to terms with what I did. Um, I still haven't completely. It's still a complete shock that this happened. Um, Tori's such an amazing person, and not someone I would ever peg as someone who would have cardiac arrest and not someone I would ever, you know, I wouldn't see her walking down the street and go, she's going to have cardiac arrest. I never thought that CPR would have to be used on me and it saved my life. And I mean, I am so grateful for, for that. <laughs> Tori was one of the lucky ones. It is estimated that more than 95% of sudden cardiac arrest victims die before reaching a hospital resulting in approximately 250,000 deaths each year in the U.S. Only one in four patients in cardiac arrest receives bystander CPR. If CPR is performed, you can double or triple a person's chance of survival. Based upon the overwhelming support for early bystander and community involvement, the American Heart Association has revised their CPR guidelines to include hands-only CPR as the preferred method of resuscitation for the untrained bystander. In addition, there is an emphasis in the community to increase AED availability to ensure the likelihood of early defibrillation. If you look at the curves that have been established for people's survival in this setting, what you find is only about 10% of the people will survive if they get shocked at eight minutes. But if good chest compressions are started right away when the person goes down, you can alter that, that death curve, if you will, significantly such that people will respond to electricity for quite a bit longer. And in fact, at eight minutes, if CPR is started immediately at eight minutes, we have more like a 40 to 50% chance of saving someone's life. Over the next two class periods, we will train you to become effective responders in the case of sudden cardiac arrest. You will be able to identify when to start chest compressions and how to perform them to ensure that they are high quality. You will be trained to use an AED and where to find the AED in your school. Finally, we will practice both CPR and AED use to ensure that any victims have the best chances for survival. Simply stated, cardiac arrest is when the heart is no longer pumping blood through the body. The victim is unconscious, not breathing, and has no pulse. If not immediately treated, the victim will most probably die. Cardiac arrest and heart attack are not the same thing. A heart attack can cause a cardiac arrest, but there are other causes. What you need to remember is, regardless of what caused the cardiac arrest, good skills and rapid treatment are the keys to survival. Remember that every second counts for victims of cardiac arrest, and at 10 minutes after collapse, they have a minimal chance of surviving. So do whatever you can do as fast as you can do it. The American Heart Association has simplified this urgency into the chain of survival. 1. Early access. Call 911. 2. Early CPR. Start chest compressions. 3. Early defibrillation. Use an AED. 4. Early advanced care. Paramedics. In most cases, paramedics can't respond and arrive at the patient's side quickly enough for the patient's sake. Now that AEDs are available to non-medically trained people, 
you can become a vital link in this chain of survival. New guidelines from the American Heart Association recommend hands-only or compression-only CPR for non-medically trained individuals. Fortunately, these recommendations make CPR much easier to perform and dramatically increase the likelihood of a response from bystanders. It has significant benefits in a lot of ways. First of all, it's a much easier way to do CPRs. So it's not that difficult to learn how to do it. You don't have to try to coordinate breaths and chest compressions, etc. The other thing is that large studies have been done that show that what causes people to be reticent about doing a resuscitation on a neighbor or loved one or someone who just goes down in the public is that folks are afraid of communicable diseases. They don't want to have to do mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. This new guideline is recommended only for adults in cardiac arrest. It is not intended as the primary response for children or victims of drowning when adding breaths to chest compressions is still recommended, although it is accepted that any effort is better than no effort. Hey buddy, you okay? If you witness someone collapse, immediately call 911 or direct someone else to activate the emergency response system by calling 911. Shake the person or rub their chest hard to get a response. If you do not get a response, start CPR immediately. Do not wait to check for a pulse. Position the patient with their back on the floor or ground. Place the heel of one hand over the center of their chest over the breastbone and place your second hand with fingers interlocked over the first. With your elbows locked, apply a downward force by falling into the patient so that the motion is directed from your torso and not your arms. High quality CPR consists of four critical variables. Depth of two inches, rate of 100, full recoil of the chest, minimal interruption. Most individuals can only perform high quality CPR for two minutes before fatigue sets in. To ensure that your victim receives only high quality CPR, you should switch providers every two minutes. Remember to coordinate the switch so that there is minimal interruption or no pause at all. The reason why these criteria are important is to ensure the forward progression of blood flow to the brain. By pressing two inches deep, we ensure that the heart pumps blood effectively. Full recoil ensures that the heart fills completely for the next effective compression. Studies show that a rate of 100 compressions per minute is ideal to ensure forward flow of blood to the brain. It's difficult for some people to remember 100 per minute or figure out what that is unless they have a metronome. So what I usually say is sing the song by the Bee Gees, you know, da, 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 staying alive, staying alive. And if you sing it at the, at the rate that they sang it, then that pretty much will pace you at 100. It takes several compressions to get forward progress of blood to the brain, so any pause effectively becomes a loss of momentum and therefore makes subsequent compressions less effective. Remember, you can only help someone by performing CPR. Do not worry about breaking ribs or harming the victim of cardiac arrest. Studies confirm that minimal harm is incurred by individuals that require chest compressions and the benefits of CPR are life-saving and worth the risk. But at the very worst, you might break a rib or two. But on the other hand, uh, if you save their life, they're gonna be grateful for a broken rib. The goal of high-quality CPR is to improve the patient's response to defibrillation or electric shock and maintain blood supply to the brain. CPR does not restart the heart, but will improve the likelihood of the heart responding to an electrical shock, which will help the heart start beating again. Remember that high-quality CPR directly improves an individual's potential response to a shock. If that shock is provided within 10 minutes of collapse and high-quality CPR is started immediately, the individual's potential survival rate is dramatically increased. Without both of these interventions, the death rate is nearly 100%, so act quickly and activate the 911 systems immediately. Remember the four components of high quality CPR. Depth, two inches. Rate of 100 compressions per minute, full recoil, and minimal interruptions.